Hi, this is Christopher Perrin with Classical Academic Press and InsideClassicalEd.com. That's my blog. This is actually a vlog, a V-log, a video log. It's based on an article I've written recently called Piling It On, Why Classical Schools Have Too Many Periods and Teach Too Many Subjects. I think it's true of classical schools generally, not in every case, but generally, that we follow the normal contemporary model of breaking our day into about seven or eight periods, and in our upper schools anyway, teaching say 10 to 12 different subjects across those periods. I think it's too much. I compare it to a buffet line. Now, I think education can be compared to a feast, a banquet that we spread. I think that is a very helpful analogy. It's been used throughout the centuries to describe a really good education. But a buffet line is something you have to do in one day uh, you one, one, one meal even, you need to move through and discern wisely what you want to put on your plate. And often, if we're hungry, we pile on too much food, especially if there's a lots of good stuff there. Now, this happens to me regularly because at our church, we have, we have a potluck buffet line every Sunday. And sometimes those lunches are really good with people bringing in lots of great dishes. And I want to have one of everything. But to put, you know, a decent helping of everything on one plate is to put far too much food on my plate. And I think we do this with our students. There's so much that we want to give them. That is good. But there is such a thing as too much of a good thing. Now, this practice isn't one that was really invented by the classical tradition. It was really one that emerged over the last 100 years, this idea of teaching many subjects over many periods, doing a lot of things, marching on a lot of different fronts uh, over the course of uh, a K through 12 educational career. Well, it was C.S. Lewis who woke me up to the fact that this was really not the way education was arranged and organized in the classical tradition. Here's what C.S. Lewis says in his autobiography, Surprised by Joy. Speaking of his, of his junior high days, where he was uh, studying, uh, studying a classical, a classical study, a cla classical studies curriculum, essentially, he says this: In those days, a boy on the classical side officially did almost nothing but classics. I think this was wise. The greatest service we can do for education today is to teach fewer subjects. No one has time to do more than a very few things well before he is 20. And when we force a boy to be a mediocrity in a dozen subjects, we destroy his standards, perhaps for life. Smugi taught us Latin and Greek, but everything else came in incidentally. Well, there's a lot there. I don't want to unpack that entire uh, passage, but notice that he does say that we should teach fewer subjects. And notice that he says, we, you know, a boy and a girl only have so much time to master or study something well before, uh, before he or she is 20. And then he says that we force a boy to be a mediocrity in a dozen subjects. That's somewhat strong language. Is the way we arrange and order education across, say, seven or eight periods, 10 to 12 subjects, is the way that we order education forcing a student to become a mediocrity in whatever he studies? Is that what we want? Lewis seems to think that it's better to master a few things, study a fewer things well, than to just cover superficially a lot of things and then essentially only offer the opportunity of mediocrity in anything that a student studies. He says the result of this is that we destroy the standards of a student. Now, what do you think he means by this? He thinks that perhaps we, we destroy it for life. What do you think? Well, as I've thought about it, I think that when we force students to just dabble in lots of subjects, we slowly communicate to them that this is what learning and education is. 
to just be exposed to things. Maybe when you get off to college, you can choose a major, but really what we're up to now is just to give you a kind of light touch and exposure to things rather than to enable you to really go deep and master anything. One, one um, common illustration of this is the way we Americans often talk about our Spanish educations or our, our study of foreign language in high school and even in college. How often have you heard it said or have you said yourself, yes, I, I studied Spanish for four years in high school, but don't ask me to say anything, please. I really don't know how to speak it. Um, what does that mean? And perhaps uh, uh, re relatedly, this is why we tend to be astonished when we meet a 17-year-old or a 16-year-old or an 18-year-old who has mastered anything. You know, a 17-year-old who is uh, just a remarkable violinist or guitarist or pianist, or a 17-year-old who is at least conversant, if not fluent in Spanish, Italian, or French. This, this isn't supposed to happen. So we're astonished. And yet, at other times and other places, this was a common occurrence. So I think that education can be a feast. It can be a banquet. But, we, but that metaphor means, as I understand it, a banquet that lasts a long time, perhaps even 13 years. In other words, the feast is an ongoing feast, and the students are learning how to feast for themselves. But what we do with the buffet line is require them to pile on their plates in short bursts and eat it all right in front of us, heaping up truth, goodness, and beauty in large servings, seven or eight periods a day, across 10 or 12 subjects, through an entire junior high and high school education. And our students are saying, I've had enough. I think it's worth thinking about. In a future article and video, I'll explore what we can do to change this, but just to give you a teaser, some schools are resorting to block scheduling and only teaching four or five arts or subjects at a time and doing deeper dives in fewer subjects over shorter periods of time rather than to just spread it all thin across the entire curriculum. And some schools are deciding simply to eliminate some, some studies uh, in order to make sure there is room to study the most important things deeply. Well, those are my thoughts about piloting on. I thank you for viewing. I'll see you next time.